All right, hello everyone, Scott Ferguson. I wanna do a quick walkthrough of the unified compliance integration into the ServiceNow platform. And we're gonna start with this quick walkthrough by looking actually at the unifiedcompliance.com website. So a part of the offering that they offer is something called the Common Control Hub, which is where as an organization you would go and kind of pick and choose from the over a thousand different regulations that they have um, in their library, the repository, and, and put together a collection, right? Or a, a shared list of the regulations that you care about as an organization. So when I get into the Common Controls Hub, the first thing I'm gonna to go to is my workspace. And in the workspace, you have the ability to essentially select, pick and choose from um, all of the different regulations. And you can see here, and I've got a list here, which I've titled for myself, right? One that I put together uh, last year, right? So um, this is my initials here, but you'll see I've put together this list of all of the regulations that I care about, right? That I would wanna import into my particular system. And on the left-hand side, we could do things like drill into, you know, in this case, the one that I have here may be COVID related, right? It's international. Or if I went into Europe, well, under uh, EU, we'll see that I've selected GDPR, right? So there's a thousand plus of these in here and I've selected a variety of them across, you know, internationally, Europe, North America, right? You can pick and choose the ones that you want as you pick those regulations, right? So in this case, I've got a list of uh, 19 regulations selected and we can see the list of them here on the left-hand side. But I'll point out that there's actually part of the power of the Common Control Sub is, you know, when you think about something like NIST uh, 853 and PCI and some of these other regulations, you know, ISO 27002, um, all of these that are, have a security lens to them, so to speak, you know, they've got verbiage in there around having strong passwords, right? One may say something like, you need to have a strong password. Another one may say, you know, having a hard to hack password is a good idea. Well, the messaging behind both of those statements that I just made are really the exact same thing, but the words were different. So what Unified Compliance does is they take those words with a, an AI they have built in there that looks at words and synonyms and, and mapping of, of root words, and, and they've got this engine behind the scenes that kind of find the things that are duplication, and then they create a harmonized control then that maps back to multiple citations. And you can see in the list of 19 regulations that I've selected, I actually have a deduplication factor of 76%, right? So that's a significant amount of regulations that, or, or citations that are duplicated across the ones that I picked that if I consolidate them, I can do this whole test one comply many type of scenario. So now that I have my list selected, I've got it saved, and I'm gonna click share here, right? And I've shared that particular list as something that within my organization, right? So uh, as, a, as a UCF subscriber, we've got multiple users in there making their own lists. And I've shared this list as one that will be available, right? For us to be able to download. So now I wanna get that information into the ServiceNow platform. So when we move over and into my ServiceNow instance here, the first thing I have to do to take advantage of that is to enable the UCF integration plugin. So when I look at the plugins here, and I'm just gonna search for UCF, in the list here, there is a GRC compliance UCF plugin, which is used to integrate to the common control sub, take that shared list and import that. And I've already got that installed. Here you can see that it was installed in my platform. If it's not, right, just simply you know, click the button and, and follow the steps along to initiate or to install that plugin. But once you have that plugin installed, it's gonna create a new module in your application navigator. So over here, I'm gonna actually search for unified compliance. And we'll see here under policy compliance administration, unified compliance integration is this, uh, new module that is where you define. So as part of being a UCF subscriber, right, if you uh, signed up for the integration in, in the API key, they'll provide you an API key that you need to uh, in, uh, in this step, right? So I'm gonna open up this particular record and what you'll see here, um, let me cancel out of that, right? So what you'll see here is it's created uh, an opportunity for me to say, this is an API key integration. I've input my API key here. And in doing so, it then allows me to search. And if I do a star star, you'll see there's a whole lot of different lists there. Now, I specifically want to use that one that I created, so that SMF right master list. And if I select that one, and then I click on Save Configuration, it's going to go out to UCF. It's going to then import that shared list directly into my platform. So that 19 regulations that I had sitting there, 
I'm going to select that. It says it's going to run in the background. Now, I've already up front did a little bit of the import here to make sure that we were doing this. Right, you can see that it's going to import that shared list. It's going to compare it to, because I've imported this once before, it's going to compare it to what I have, and it's going to give me an opportunity then to see things that's changed in this and, and apply those changes into my environment. Now, I'm going to run this in the background, right? I'm going to let it continue downloading some of that additional content. But as you move forward in this process, right, how that then you take advantage of the content that was loaded, and we can see, right, it's 18 of the 19 have downloaded. Right, the, the different regulations that have been installed here. But I want to go to authoritative documents. So under policy and compliance, compliance authoritative documents is where you're going to see that information. Right, so if I select that, I now have a list of all of those authoritative documents that have been loaded into my system. And what we'll see here, if I scroll down and maybe take a look at some of these, you know, maybe I want to look at NIST 866, which has to do with, you know, incident response or uh, HIPAA, right, or whatever it may be. I want to look at some of these different regulations. So I've got them all available to me right here within the platform. So what I want to do is I want to actually take a look at the NIST 853 as an example, right? So as we drill into this NIST 853, at the top of this you're going to see in the fields that are read-only are the records or the data that has come in from UCF. Right, so the source says it's come from UCF. It's a North America, right? It's a it's a national standard. I've got my link to the original publication here. If I wanted to look at it, right? The link, the source ID. So back on the Common Control Sub, all of those regulations had a source ID. I can see that mapping back here to the UCF. But I also see that this part of this, it's it's downloaded a whole series of these citations that make up that particular document. Now. For the sake of conversation, I want to narrow this down because I want to show you some of the power of how this how this comes together. If I look at the citations that make up um, up that particular record, sorry, let me uh, open up my navigator here and I want to search for password in the description, and you'll see there are nine different pieces or nine different citations within NIST that relate to passwords. So in this case, if I look at the one here that has to do with enforcing, you know, minimum complexity, and I'm going to drill into that particular citation, we can see, again, this is the details, right? That's that paragraph that's in that particular document. And I can see that this particular citation is mapped to a consolidated control objective. Right, and this consolidated control objective, as I drill into it, is the harmonized one that came from UCF that says, you know what, uh, NIST may have said you need to do A, B, C, and D, and PCI says you need to do A, C, E, and F, right, but really at the end of the day it's the same thing. You need to meet some, you know, minimum complexity requirements, and we have that harmonized control here, but more importantly, we also see right here on the citations related list that this one harmonized control maps back to, in this case, 12 different citations from various uh, authoritative documents, whether it's the NIST 853, right, the one that I used to get here, but this same one is also in PCI. It's also in uh, mapping to other paragraphs within, in this case, the high impact of the, or the NIST 853 high impact. It's also in the SANS um, critical security controls. But essentially now in one place, I have a control that if we went through the process now, I could relate it to a policy or an entity type. I could have this control objective then be disseminated across my organization as controls. And this is one that started off with, with me and the, the common controls hub picking and choosing the regulations, deduplifying, importing through the API, through that plugin, getting it into as an authoritative document within my uh, application, drilling into it through a citation, getting to that harmonized control, and then rolling that out as a control across my organization. Hopefully you found this useful kind of from an end-to-end -end, uh, flow from the common controls all the way to the control using UCF and ServiceNow together.